Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this Creative Zone Tax and Accounting um, webinar in collaboration with the sister entity, Creative Zone Tax and Accounting. As some of you might know, Creative Zone Tax and Accounting is an independent organization of Creative Zone as a standalone company. Creative Zone helps individuals um, and corporations with their needs of setting up businesses and uh, organizing visas and PRO solutions. And Creative Zone Tax and Accounting is a standalone independent entity leaded by Sishan Tour. Hannah is also part of the management team and Mohammed, and they're part of the Creative Zone Tax and Accounting team where we support um, our clients and outside clients with their tax and accounting needs. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Sishan, Mohammed, and Hannah, thank you so much for taking the time for being here with us today. Thank you, Lorenzo. It's good to be here. And thank you everyone for joining in. Good stuff. And we look forward to today. So maybe to get started, I mean, we, we are all aware that the UAE has introduced a set of changes uh, in the compliance side of things with the introduction of some of the new regulations in regards to uh, ESR, uh, AML, UBO, the latest uh, corporate tax that was introduced earlier this year. Maybe Hannah, as some sort of an introduction, give us a bit of a, an intro to the sort of main changes to this landscape that were introduced by the UAE government and, and how does this affect sort of businesses or, or people that are operating companies here in the UAE? Sure, so thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's an ever-changing landscape within the UAE with compliance. Um, as you mentioned, there is ESR. Um, there are nine activities within ESR. Um, and there's a lot of companies that think that if these activities are not um, on your license and they are not a registered activity on your license, that ESR may not apply to you. And this is something that is not true. It's about relevant activity that's happening within your business. So it really requires a deep assessment of understanding what your business activity is um, and understanding how the laws, how you fit into the laws um, surrounding it. And Zishan will be talking in more depth about ESR today, just to go through that as well. Um, as well with AML, uh, a lot of people think that it's the same as ESR. So they think that they need to have a relevant activity that's going on in their business, but it's the opposite. So you need to have the activity, but it also needs to be on registered on your business license. So if you have one of the activities registered on your license, you would then need to register for Go AML straight away. Um, another thing is there are ever-changing laws um, with VAT and especially with corporate tax coming into effect as well. It's required that you have bookkeeping. Um, it's a mandatory requirement in the UAE um, and this came into effect when the VAT laws came in, so that was in 2018. Um, many businesses still think that they are not required to do bookkeeping. They are unaware that this is a mandatory requirement um, by the authorities. But at any point, the authorities can come, they can ask to see this information, um, and you're required to have five years um, worth of bookkeeping to show if at any point someone will start. Um, as well, we see many free zones, um, free zone licenses where they feel that VAT is something that is obtained. So they feel that they will get a TRN number on their license um, when they obtain their license. So this is not true. This is something that companies have to register for. Um, there is a threshold of 375,000 dirhams, which is a mandatory threshold amount. So when companies reach that amount, regardless of whether you're free zone or mainland, you are required by law to register for VAT. And then you would be required to do that submissions based on that as well. Excellent. Well, thank you for the introduction, Hannah. Maybe Sisha, okay. you, can, you can pick up from that. Uh, I'm aware that you have many years of experience in, in, in advising clients on, on, on tax and accounting related matters. Hannah is, is well explaining there's been changes and introductions on ESR, AML, VAT, the recent uh, corporate tax introduction. Where, where can you pick up from there on, on some other sort of uh, advices that we can give to, to, to people watching this webinar? Sure, absolutely. So there are a lot of, you know, these laws, as you, as you rightly said, that the, these laws have came in and it has made um, the environment 
a little more less friendly, but uh, it, it, the aim for the, from the government's point of view is to be more transparent in this environment and to also, you know, uh, be, you know, on the same stand as, as the international environment, international, you know, economic environment. And that's why these laws have been put in, into place. So, um, and going further from one, what Hannah said that there are so, still some misconceptions regarding these laws. One additional thing from one example is, you know, UBO, you, in UBO, you, you're required to do the initial submission that every company does at a license uh, setup stage. But uh, then there's another, another, another obligation that comes into place that they have to maintain these registers for their own entities, shareholder registers, UBO registers, um, and those have to be maintained regardless of submitting those information to the, to the authorities. And then obviously when there are amendments to these uh, details, any of these details, they are then also required to you know, submit these details to the authorities as well. But um, I want to also focus in this webinar to, on ESR uh, because one main reason is that most of the companies in, um, in UAE and all over the world have a financial year end of uh, in December. Um, and right now for most of those companies, for all of those companies, ESR deadlines would be in place and they would have to submit a yes, notification by the end of the month if they have um, you know, the financial year end and they conduct relevant activity. So um, going to, I'm going to introduce the ESR law just a little bit. Um, so the actual law came into place in 2019, and but was also amended in 2020, and um, and this was all in you know uh, in reflection to the international standards set by OECD and the European Union. So basically, the purpose of this law is um, it's applied on UA companies. Uh, which conduct certain activities. Um, I'll go through that list um, next, but, um, but this applies to them and it requires the entities to maintain and demonstrate adequate economic presence within UAE. That's very important because they want uh, the profits of the companies to be accurate and reflect the economic activity that is being conducted within UAE and not be something that is being done within any other country and the profits are being benefited over here. So that's one of the main reasons that this law was introduced for. So um, going back to the activities that are, uh, are under the ESR law, there are nine relevant activities, which are banking, uh, insurance, investment fund, lease and finance, headquarter, shipping business, holding business, uh, intellectual properties, and distribution and service uh, business as well. So these are the nine relevant activities. If you're conducting any one of them, um, and it's, then you would be you know, uh, uh, eligible under this law. But it's very important for clients to understand that this is not just what is going to be mentioned on your trade license. It's also um, the ESL law has a substance over form approach um, and that's very important when you're assessing yourself with regards to uh, economic substance, because in some case, this law applies to, for example, uh, one example here is lease and finance. One of the definitions of this activity is if you have given a loan uh, for any consideration to anyone, that could be clients, that could be shareholders, that could be partners, that could be employees, anyone. If it has a consideration involved in it, then this law would apply to you and you would be conducting lease and finance activity. So, and that's something that anyone can do, whatever trade license activity they would have. So, so it doesn't necessarily why, mean that this activity of, of leasing and financing has to be present as listed in, as one of your activities. If you're performing this kind of things within your business, it means that you fall under ESR. Exactly. That's, that's why this law has to be, you know, from every company's point of view, they have to assess whatever has actually happened within that financial year. It's very important because even the same law can apply differently in different years. When income is earned, whether the, whether the activity was being conducted or not, it applies according to whatever, have, whatever you have done in that particular financial year. So the annual assessment is a very important thing from this law's point of view. 
So, uh, to go further from this, what would happen if you are conducting any of those nine relevant activities? If you're conducting them, then you would have to do a notification, uh, ES notification, six months after six months of uh, within the six months after your financial year end has happened. And then if you've earned any income, then you would have to also do a economic substance report that needs to be filed within 12 months of financial year end. And with that, it also uh, in that there's a declaration whether you've passed the economic substance test. And that test is very important for companies to you know, look at because if you're conducting a relevant activity, what you need to do is have adequate expenses within UAE, have adequate personnel, professional personnel, which relate to the activity that you're conducting. Um, also have adequate you know, assets, the premises, all of these things need to be in place. The direction and management of that particular activity needs to be done from UAE as well. So these are things that entities need to be very considerate about, and especially before the year end. They cannot wait for the year end to happen and then assess because whatever has happened has already happened. They can't change whatever has happened. So they need to have all of these things in place during the year so that at the end of the year, they can say, yes, we had this in place. Yes, we had this in place. Yes, we had this in place in the last year and then file this mission accordingly and declare that they've passed the test. Prasant is asking, one of the listed categories you mentioned is distribution and services. He's asking what would fall under services? Would this be any services type of company? So yes, that's a very good question because um, some people do understand that this applies to all services. It does not apply to all services. The, the definition that comes under this law is applicable only to clients who uh, provide services to foreign connected parties or group companies. Only that, only those set of people you know, fall under this law. Sort of that you become a corporate service provider type of thing. No, no, no. That, that's if you provide those services to a foreign connected person, then it is. So if, for example, you have a parent company or a subsidiary anywhere else in the world and you're providing some services, it could be, you know, those services setting up a license there. It could be financial services. It could be, you know, other consultancy, whatever services that you provide. If you're providing it to a related party, then it would fall under this law. Mm-hmm. Richard is asking, what about IP services? So yeah, IP services is also important because it, it also has two subcategories. One is where you own an intellectual property asset and you earn income from that. But there's another subcategory that's called high-risk IP uh, activity. And th- those have some criteria uh, with it that you need to have it by, it, there's a set of criteria that I can you know, uh, talk to you um, uh, individually, Richard. Uh, but that's very important because if you're a high risk, the, it's the, the law says that you're automatically at default of um, you know, passing the test and you have to prove yourself that you actually passed the test and have all of this, those things here. So the asset, the intellectual property asset could be anything. Uh, from software to having any other any other intellectual property that you license out to people. So and earning income from that is very important. Right. Well, we have a lot of good questions coming through. I'm going to try to keep catch up and read some of these. But Avina is asking, is it mandatory to submit a notification even if a company is not conducting any relevant activity? So if the company is not falling any under any of these activities or conducting any of these activities, there's no need to uh, submit any notification to the, to the authorities on this. So, yeah, that is true from a Ministry of Finance point of view. So Ministry of Finance does not require anyone who is not conducting a relevant activity to submit a notification saying that they're not conducting a relevant activity. But we have seen uh, one or two free zones who have asked clients to submit a notification just to them, to the relevant free zone itself, and just asking them to file a notification with them, even if you're not. And it, the notification can just say that uh, we do not conduct an activity if we have not submitted it to M- MOF portal. So mm. that's something that we have seen uh, in this, you know, in this year from one or two free zones. And but that's really subjective to your particular free zone. 
Mm -hmm. So businesses that are set up in the mainland, in this case, if you're not falling under their ESR activities, there's nothing that you should be submitting to the authorities. Yeah, from, from a Ministry of finance, uh, finance point of view, nothing. But um, as it develops, we've seen that uh, what happens from a licensing authority point of view, they have to do their own uh, you know, due diligence and see which, active, which, com which companies actually fall under those activities. And they don't have a sense of what your operations are actually. Right, so they have to, you know, assess from their their point of view who has submitted previously and is not submitting now. So they have to do those kind of due diligence tasks to understand who might it apply to. So that's why some authorities are requiring them, even you know, the companies to file a notification, even if they're not doing um, relevant activity. But that's on a, a free zone to free zone, or um, even it it might be applicable for the mainlands, but. As of now, we have not heard about anything, but it might, you know, it, it's always an evolving framework here in UAE, so. Uh, I see, well, we have a few cases. Prasant is also asking a few more specific questions. Maybe what I would suggest to our tech team is to include this, uh, this form, this landing page that people can fill in and they can put their specific questions and the team, uh, Sishan, Mohammed, and Hannah will reach out to you after the webinar and they will address your questions one by one, uh, do a consultation that is totally free of charge and try to help you with some of these queries. We cannot go in too much detail uh, with each, each and every question right now because we will spend a bit, a bit uh, too much time on it and we have a few points uh, that we wanna address. Um, how often do these assessments need to be done? Let's say that I've done my assessment of ESR the year before, uh, this year, do I need to do a new assessment, Sishan? Yes, so that is very important because people understand that, okay, I've not done any relevant activity in the year before, so it does not apply to me now as well. But it's very important to look at what has happened in this year. And I'll explain this uh, more using an example because, um, there, so let's take holding company as an example. And that I think some of our uh, clients will also you know, relate to that. So when you set up a holding company in the first year, you might not invest in shares, right? So you're not doing any activity. So first year, you would not have to do any notification or any report. And this law would not apply because you're not doing any activity at all. So in the second year, you decide to invest in shares. In that year, you have invested in shares, maybe three companies, but you've not earned any income from them. You've not received any dividend or any capital gear. You've not sold anything. You've just invested and you're still waiting for the first dividend to come in. So second year, that doesn't happen, but you're still conducting that activity. So for the second year, you would have to file an ES notification only because you're conducting an activity. So that's, mm -hmm. that applies to the second year. In the third year, what can happen is they can start to earn dividends from these shares that they've purchased. So in the, in the third year, you've actually earned income from it. So, and what is happening in the third year is you're conducting an activity, you're earning income from it. So in, for the third year, you would have to actually file a notification, also file a report, which tells the authorities as well that you've passed the test, you have adequate resources in the UAE to do the activity that is required. So this is why it's very important for every client whether they've done a notification before or not to assess what have they done within that relevant year. And then whatever is required, whatever is applicable, they would have to then file according to that. And this time for June, it's very important because as I said, most companies in the UAE have economic substance or financial year end December. So the notification deadline is six months within the financial year end. Uh, so that is June for most of these companies. And the ESR report deadline is also June for companies whose financial year end is June 2021. So within that 12 month period. So this is very important for companies because like I said, most of the companies have financial year end of Jan to December. So they will have this period now. How do individuals and, and these companies do go about doing the reporting? Does this have to be logged in directly with the jurisdiction that has issued the license in this case? No, so what happens now is now MOF has uh, 
a one portal on MOF itself where you can create a login and you can submit the notification for that particular event. And that's just it. And the notification is also fine on that one uh, portal and the report is also filed on that one portal. That's from a federal point of view. But like I said, the some authorities might require companies to do a notification or file something on their portal as well, their own uh, licensing portal. So that uh, helps them to, you know, govern this a little bit more. What are some of the penalties incurred if not um, keeping things in check when it comes to ESR? So... Uh, notification within the six months period, you would get a 20,000 penalty straight off. And it, it's something that is, you know, applied automatically through the system, through the system that they've set up on the portal itself. And then if you have to file a notification or a report as well within the 12 month period, there's a penalty of 50,000. And in this case, it's also assumed that uh, you have failed the economic substance test. And that is very important because once you fail the economic substance test more than once on the second time, the penalties can reach up to 400,000. So that's very important to understand what you need to do and by when you need to do it. It's, it's going to be very important for each and every client who's conducting any of these relevant activities. Mm, excellent. All right. Well, uh, before we move into the big topic also of today on the issue of corporate tax that was introduced uh, earlier this year with Mohammed. Mohammed, uh, I'm aware that you will be touching on this. Maybe Hannah, touching back to you before we go into Mohammed, uh, how is it that Creative Zone Tax and Accounting can help in making those assessments from an ESR point of view? What has been your experience in helping clients? What is the kind of assessment that you do you go about doing for clients? And Alexandra is asking, what is the platform to submit this notification? Maybe if we can share the link. And, and, and again, what is the assessment that CZTA can help with? Cool. So we can do an assessment right at the point of starting the business. So once you obtain a business license, we can do an assessment at that point to ensure that you will fall correctly into ESR so that when you reach the first year, you don't get to the end of the year and realize that you haven't implemented certain substance and put things in place um, that are required for your ESR. So that's something we can do as well. After your first year, we can do an assessment at that point and we will look at the relevant activity um, that you have done in that year. And then we can also assess the revenue and the amount of funds that you have made from that ESR activity. So. Um, what we will do is we will have a, a consultation um, with you over the phone. Uh, we will get uh, some relevant information from you, um, understand what your business is doing um, and the activity that you may fall into. And then we will do a deep dive into your business activity uh, and the assessment will be based on that. And with that, we give you a full report um, so that you know exactly what you will be submitting in your ES notification and then what will also be defined in the report as well. Excellent. Maybe also, yeah, go ahead, Anna. Sorry, yes. Um, yeah, and in terms of the platform, so if you are doing a submission, um, it will be via MOF. So there is an MOF portal. Um, and then as well, if it's via one of the free zones, um, they would also have their own portal submission um, and you would have a login detail for that as well. So it would depend on whether you would be doing it via MOF or whether it would be required by one of the free zones. Excellent. Maybe at this stage also, I may ask uh, Mohammed, Sisha, and Hannah, maybe if you can include your email addresses there on the chat function. And to all the attendees, if you want to address yourself to any of them with questions after today, if you want to get that assessment done of your company to see if you're falling under uh, any of these activities or whether your company is doing any of these activities, regardless of the fact that you fall under the activities, please reach out to the guys on the emails that they're gonna write here below. And uh, Sishan, before we pass on to corporate tax, any final comments on, on ESR before we close ESR for today? Well, um, I would always say that have an annual assessment done, whatever the circumstances may be, because there, there are some clients who say that, okay, we have not done anything in the previous year. 
we've have everything same as the last submission so we don't need to do anything we don't need to do anything further but like like i've said that there could be differences in very minor things which you've done over the you know year so it's important to see and reflect on your current year rather than just assuming that you've not changed from the previous submission so that's very important because the penalties are heavy and no one likes you know it's even a 30 20000 penalty so whatever may maybe the reason excellent good good all right so mohammed uh, coming on to you um uh, today's topic on on your case you you are our sort of tax expert at uh, creative zone tax and accounting uh we're all aware of, of the introduced uh, corporate tax earlier in q1 to come into effect in june 2023 if i'm not mistaken give us a bit of an introduction into this new regulation in regards to corporate tax and um and what is it that people should know about on on how they should go about registering themselves and anything else that they should know thank you lorenzo for the introduction uh so today i will go briefly with the main topics that were recently announced by the minister of finance through the public consultation documents so on 31st of jan the minister of finance announced the introduction of the corporate tax with effective date for financial years starting on 1st of june 2023 and after so which means if the company's financial year is starting from june then the corporate tax will be applicable to the company starting from 2023 but as most of the companies have the financial year of jan to december then the corporate tax will be applicable to them starting from jan 2024 um the corporate tax rate will be at 9% uh, mm-hmm. this will be applicable on the net profit but the net profit above 375000 the first 375000 will be taxed at 0%. Uh what I would like to start with is the major question who will be taxable under the corporate tax. So when it comes to this question we will have two categories. If you are a natural person which means an individual that is engaged in business activity or commercial activity So in order to establish this we would need to look whether the individual is considered as engaged in the business activity or not if he is required to obtain a license to uh, do the activities or needs a permit from the authority to be able to practice his activity so if this is the case then the person will be under the corporate tax and will be taxable there are some exclusions to this which is an example of that employment income which will not be taxable under the corporate tax the other thing is the other personal income earned by a, the person such as dividends or rental receipts from real estate investments uh these will be the natural persons that will be taxable under the corporate tax then we will go to the legal persons which means any company and or other legal person incorporated in the UAE this includes the limited liability companies the private share holding companies public joint stock companies all these will be under the regulations of the corporate tax uh in addition to this the foreign legal entities as well that are effectively managed and controlled in the UAE will be taxable under the corporate tax and also the foreign legal entities that are earning uae source of income will be still taxable under the uae corporate tax uh, so these are the two categories that will be taxable under the corporate tax there are some exemptions that will not be taxable uh, like the federal and emirate governments these will not be taxable will be out of the scope the wholly owned businesses by government but given the fact that they conduct only sovereign activities not that they conduct commercial activities so for sovereign activities will be out of the scope but in case the government entity or the business owned by the government entity is conducting commercial activity this will be within the scope of the corporate tax 
Are there also exemptions like the public and regulated private social securities, regulating investing uh, funds? All these will be uh, exempt and the charities as well. Um, also, we all know that the businesses engaged in the extraction of the natural resources are already taxable at emirate level taxation. So this will be out of the scope of the corporate tax, but they will still be taxable under the emirate level taxation. Uh, I think the most important topic would be to talk about the free zones, which is the, the common questions for most of our clients. Would free zone entities be uh, within the scope of the corporate tax or not? So the answer for this will be yes, free zone entities will be within the scope of corporate tax, which means that the free zone entity would need to register for corporate tax, would need to submit annual return, and then we will go to more details. The UAE corporate tax regime will honor the, the incentives that are being offered to the free zones, which is 0% corporate tax. But this is under certain conditions that the free zone entity uh, complies with the free zone regulations and doesn't make business with mainland entities. So in this case, only those free zone companies that are purely operating within the boundaries of the free zone or outside of the country will only will be applicable to 0% tax, corporate tax. Uh, yes, so free zone entities can benefit from 0% corporate tax if they are dealing within the same free zone or another free zone as well. And also if they are dealing with a clients outside of the UAE but dealing with clients in the mainland would disqualify the free zone entity from benefiting from 0% corporate tax. Would that sort of pollute the entire books of that entity if you get to do business with one entity or one individual that is mainland based? Yes, so if you do business only with one client from the mainland, then all your um, profit would be taxable. It will disqualify you from benefiting from the 0% corporate tax. What is considered someone that is a, a mainland person? Let's say that you have a free zone company and you are a media company and you are providing services of photography to individuals. Now you engage with someone that is living in Dubai would that individual fall under being in the mainland if he has a Dubai visa? Only he will not be in the mainland if he happened to have a free zone visa. How, what's the distinction between deal, doing business with someone that is in the mainland or not? Uh, regarding this, more details will be announced when the regulations will be published in fully, uh, how this will be treated, but our understanding for this, if you do uh, provide your service outside the free zone and you go to a mainland, this would be considered that you provide a service to a mainland client. Hmm. This, I think, would, would this is our understanding and this will be more clarified once the regulations will be uh, announced. So the bottom line seems to be that uh, free zone entities that will qualify for the 0% tax is really for those that operate 100%, let's say, out of the UAE. If you are looking to have a free zone company and you want to conduct business within the, the country, in one way or another, you're going to end up doing business with someone within the UAE and you're going to end up paying taxes. So we're saying... Don't think that by setting up a company in a free zone uh, is that you're not going to be paying taxes only in the case that you're truly going to be operating with people outside of the country. Would that be a right assessment to, to put yes, forward? Yes, yes, exactly. To benefit from this, you need to comply with the regulations of the free zone and to only deal with clients in, in the same free zone or another free zone, or the last thing would be outside of the UAE. However, if a free zone entity has a branch in the mainland, then the UAE will, uh, the tax will be applicable on the branch only. If, for example, you have a free zone company and you have a branch of this free zone company, and this branch for sure is dealing with mainland, then 
the corporate tax will be applicable on the branch with the 9% and on your free zone entity at 0%. You can still benefit from that. Alex is asking, so better to have two companies in the free zone then? Are we saying two companies in the free zone or one in the free zone and one in the mainland? This is what we're saying, Mohammed. Uh, I would say if you have a, a free zone company and you are going to deal with clients in the mainland, you can set up a branch of your company in the mainland. Mm. and do all the transactions through this mainland branch, then you would be taxed at the normal corporate tax rate, 9% for the branch only, and your free zone entity will be still subject to the 0% corporate tax. Mm. I think this is a very good distinction and, and, um, and solution. And for those that have, of course, the, the, the needed sort of movement of business, it could become uh, more attractive for people to structure their businesses in such a way, uh, right? Yes, with the announcement of the corporate tax, it's, it's the right time for all the businesses to start structuring their businesses uh, properly in a way that will make them to uh, be able to benefit from, uh, for example, the 0% for free zones, to be able to avoid paying more taxes than what you should. Hmm. Uh, Sishan, anything that we can pick up from, from where we're at with Mohammed? I, I have a few more questions from, from Mohammed. There's a few good questions coming through in the, in the Q&A box as well. Anything that you can add from your side on this? Sure. Um, there's one element uh, I think Mohammed uh, would uh, elaborate more on this is uh, that audit is going to become much more important for these free zone companies uh, as for to be able to claim that 0%. Um, you would have to have audited financials. Yeah, this is a very important point. So the, the concept of audited financials and bookkeeping becomes a little bit even more relevant nowadays than what it used to be in the past. Mohammed, what, what can we explain on, on the bookkeeping side of things and uh, unaudited reports that need to be submitted? Yeah, when it comes to the documentation, so all the businesses are expected to have and required to have their financial statements ready. As uh, we all know that the corporate tax is a tax applicable on the net profit. So in order to be able to, to monitor this, the tax authority would need you. We expect that would be required to submit the financial statements for all the entities along with other documents that would be required. Um, to reach to this, you would need to have your financial statements ready. This is the, the first thing. Regarding the free zone entities, in order to benefit from the 0% corporate tax and audit report will be required. Uh, for other entities that are mainland, the audit report is not required for the corporate tax purposes. However, if the jurisdiction from which you issued your licenses does require an audit report, you will still be required to submit it. Uh, this is for uh, the documentations. Uh, another thing is that uh, for the corporate tax purposes, um, the opening balances for the corporate tax will be the closing balances of the previous year, of the year before the first taxable year, which means that all businesses should start from now to maintain their financial statements properly because at the time of the registration of the corporate tax you would need to report your opening balances for the corporate tax purposes which will be used and continue with you uh, with the corporate tax uh, submissions a good question from Gigi that has come in the past is there any caps on management fees to owners or any abnormal expenses for assessing the taxable income can people just go out and put themselves very high you know management fees and ceo salaries and and in order to con contrast this yeah this is a good question for this purpose with the introduction of the corporate tax the uh, minister of finance also announced that transfer pricing will be in in place the ue corporate tax regime will have transfer pricing rules to ensure that transactions between related parties uh, cannot be affected depends on the relation uh, between the two parties. So this will be applicable on all the businesses uh, and this will follow the internationally recognized arms length principle. 
to transactions and agreements and arrangements between the related parties and connected persons. Uh, also, transfer pricing documentation will be required to be in place, and all the companies will need to disclose to the FTA uh, the details about the, their transactions with the related parties. And also, documentations will be in place, and master and uh, master file would need to be kept uh, for the records. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, Richard is going a bit deeper on this and saying, what is stopping him of, he's 100% owner of the company, what is stopping him of paying himself 100% of the profit as bonuses uh, or as a salary? Yes, this is something that would be assessed um, using the transfer pricing. So if you are paying yourself a salary, it wouldn't be something that is allowed to pay all your profit as a salary for yourself. And more details will come out with the regulations and will be also mentioned in the transfer pricing details. Mm. Good, good. I, I'll give you a couple of minutes to sort of refresh your, your thoughts. Uh, it's, it's a little bit heavy on you. Maybe Hannah, back to you. What has been your experience so far on the kind of questions that you're asked, you're being asked from, from clients? Any, any other more sort of details that we can give on this topic? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'll add to what Mohammed was saying um, regarding bookkeeping. Um, as I already mentioned, it is a mandatory requirement in the UAE. We're still seeing lots of businesses who haven't um, kept up to date with their financial statements. And this is a service that we can offer. So even if you want to do your bookkeeping from previous years, we can do a one-off bookkeeping um, and we can get those financial statements in order for you. And then we can offer annual bookkeeping for your future um, transactions and, and services as well. So Hello, I think uh, um, there's some connection issue, but um, Hannah, we couldn't hear the last part. That you, could, could you repeat that? Oh, sorry. Um, so, can we hear me now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so, I was just saying that we can do the one-off bookkeeping, um, which means that we will go back and look at your previous years, and we can give you financial statements for that. Um, pricing, I see a question on pricing. Pricing depends on the transaction amount. So depending on how many transactions you have in the year or monthly, um, we would base the pricing on that. And we have different packages as well. So if you also would require VAT registration and VAT returns, we do different pricing um, based on that. So I recommend getting in touch with us um, and we can assess your business and look at the amount of transactions and we can give you a price based on that. Yeah, and I think uh, having this one year, one year and a half lead time, it, it's a good time for companies and to people to get organized with this and start getting into getting used to this kind of reporting and, and exercises that they need to do. Um, no, great, great. Thank you for that, Hannah. Uh, Mohammed, back to you. So what else can we add on, on this topic before we go into more questions? I will go briefly through the administration related to the corporate tax, which will start with the registration. So any business that is subject to the corporate tax will need to register with the FTA and to obtain a tax registration number. This is something that will not be generated automatically with the license or any uh, authority will issue it. You would need to apply for the tax registration number with the tax authority, the FTA. And this should be within the prescribed period that will be announced with the regulations. Uh, the other thing is that the FTA can also automatically register the businesses if they are not doing this voluntarily by themselves. Uh, the second thing would come to the deregistration. Business would need to apply for deregistration within three months of liquidation. So in case you are liquidating your business, then you would need to submit an application for the deregistration. Um, after that, uh, as uh, was announced by the Minister of Finance, the 
corporate tax will be submitted one return every year. So for after the end of the financial year, a corporate tax return will be required to be submitted along with some supporting documents. Uh, this will be should be submitted within nine months of the end of the financial year. So for example, if your financial year is from Jan to December, then you would have Jan to December, for example, 2024, then you would have a deadline of September uh, 2025 to submit your VET return and also to make the payment of the tax to the FTA. So we're saying that if your financial year is Jan to December uh, and this will be applicable for the year of 2024, uh, your first filing of the tax will happen in 2025. Yes, correct. Within nine months of the end of the year. Mm. Good. Uh, so many good questions coming through. Let me see if I can pick up um, a few. Um, sorry, one second. My chat is here. Would a track record of salaries and bonuses in years prior to the establishment of the company provide a basis for determining what is the reason reasonable for salaries and bonuses? So showing the history of what salaries and bonuses were from the previous year be used as, as examples of what could be used going forward? Uh, up to now, it's not yet announced by the FTA how and what are the measures that will be taken in order to uh, um, assess whether these salaries are reasonable or not. I think this is something that would be announced and it would have specific measures in place. Excellent. Um, Sishan, what comments would you have at this stage about uh, corporate tax? Yeah, uh, I think one of the questions that uh, I think Richard and one more uh, other person also asked was regarding the audit for the fee zone. I think it's it may not have been, uh, you know, as clear to them, but for uh, companies we, which are in fee zones, they would have to have the audited statements for claiming the VA, for claiming the you know exemption or exception from corporate tax at zero percent, that's something that uh, needs to be established and clear because that is going to kick in as soon as the corporate tax is implemented. So, uh, and it's expected that the authorities, the licensing authorities, will have some similar regulations come into place um, around that time as well. So that's one uh, area, and um, and yes, what Mohammed said. Once the regulations are, you know, issued uh, from a corporate tax point of, point of view, I think it will bring in a lot more clarity on these subjects um, and it will be a little bit more, you know, um, better place to be in. There was a question, a good question from before. He was saying, does the threshold of 375,000 dirhams, is it on revenue or on net profit? Uh, this threshold is on net profit, but this means that from zero up to three, 375,000 will be taxed at 0%. Then the next one dirham will be taxed at 9%. And that is every year calculated the same way. So the first 375,000 dirhams are not taxable. Yes, correct. Okay. Repeat the part of where, how do will people go about registering themselves for corporate tax? So for uh, corporate tax, the FTA, the Federal Tax Authority of the UAE will announce the way to register, which we expect that would be online on their portal. So there would be an application that needs to be submitted with the Federal Tax Authority. There are also some documentations that would be required up to now. The way and the deadline for this is not yet announced. But we expect that this will be detailed in the regulations that we expect will be uh, uh, published uh, in June. Great. Um, Nasim is asking, we're in the business of distribution and our clients are mainly based in UAE. Do you think that moving the billing and main operations to Oman can offer an advantage? For this, you would need to check with Oman about the regulations. If you would set up in Oman, this something would would fall uh, with Oman. But um, basically, if there is um, income that generated from the UAE, it might be taxable also under the corporate tax of the UAE. Mm -hmm. 
Will the corporate tax be linked to VAT? Is it the same portal, same registration, or is totally kept separately? Uh, it would be totally separately. So if you are registered for the VET, you would need to follow your current uh, quarterly VET returns or if it's monthly. Uh, regarding the corporate tax will be a separate registration. You will have different tax registration number and you would need to submit one tax return, which is separate from the VET, you will submit it for the corporate tax. So as a company, as a whole of what we're hearing for today in the issues of VAT, ESR, tax, uh, you're able to advise clients holistically on all these solutions. I'm guessing that people will come to you and you'll be able to assist them with all these uh, solutions, correct, uh, Mohamed? Yeah, we do assist our clients with the tax and accounting, also the compliance. So we do assist currently the, our clients with their accounting, financial advising, uh, also the VET, whether it's registration, VET returns, all the services related to the VET and uh, compliance when it comes to the UBO, the anti-money laundering and the ESR. All these, we do assist our clients from Creative Zone and also uh, clients from outside of the creative zone. And for sure, we would be uh, happy to assist our clients as well with the corporate tax. And I think a lot of this, as it continues to unveil itself, uh, we're still waiting for some further sort of uh, information to come from the authorities. A lot of it has to be a bit of a one-on-one -on -one discussion to see how it's applicable for people's operations and the kind of work that they do. So I do recommend for anybody watching this to reach out to Mohamed, Sishan, and Hannah, feel free to showcase, you know, your operation, what you do, and, and the guys will be able to assist on, on what would be the best uh, sort of strategy going forward. I feel you guys have become as important as, as, as doctors nowadays, and to be able to constantly be checking in with you and making sure that you know, companies and businesses are kept in check when it comes to all of these regulations, right? Yeah, and I just wanted to add, we, we do currently have a promotion on our compliance assessment package. And so this covers everything Mohammed just talked about. So we would do an assessment on your bookkeeping, VAT, um, ESR, so all your compliance. Um, and within that promotion, if we find that you do you need a VAT registration or you need to do an ES notification, um, that's included in the package as well. So that's something really good to just look at everything that you're doing um, and to get a full report and an assessment from us to let you know what we recommend um, for you in the future as well. So the contact uh, us form is there listed to say taxandaccounting.ae, uh, contact us. Uh, the forms of fill in your details there if anybody would like to learn more. We have four minutes left. Maybe Sishan, what would be your final thoughts for today's session? Like Hannah said, you need to get an assessment done and have the structure set properly for the next year and the future as well. That's something that you need to do for your entity. And um, these are things that are well, complex things which need to be handled by someone. And if you do not get some clarity on this or get your assessment done on what applies to your business, there will be some issues. There will be penalties and sanctions or anything like that. And it's really recommended to get yourself assessed by someone to assess your all your needs, UBO, ESR, AML, just to set up your bookkeeping, PAT. There are still a lot of misconceptions in, in the environment and Every day, new people are starting up businesses and they, they're not, they don't have enough clarity on all these subjects. So it's really good at a starting point to set the stage right, set everything right, know what you need to do, know what needs to happen for your company, what applies to your company and how to do that. Excellent. Mohammed, your final thoughts for today and some final recommendations to everybody watching this? Uh, I would recommend all the businesses to start now looking into first thing is their structure to make sure that their businesses are structured in the best way to uh, make, make them take uh, the best advantage of the corporate tax and also um, not to be paying extra than what they should. The second thing to look at the internal processes to make sure that you do your accounting records properly that you follow the IFRS standards. Um, then 
if we will be waiting for the regulations and you will be ready while you are waiting for the regulations not when you will be asked about providing financial statements or providing uh, audit reports then you need to be ready from now it's time for all the businesses to be uh, more organized than before excellent excellent hana your final thoughts for today yeah, so, so the same um, as what both Mohammed and Zishan said. Um, just now is the time to get prepared. It's, it's better to be over prepared and, and be ready at this point than to be too late and receive penalties down the line. Uh, we always have clients come to us when it's too late and they've already received a penalty. So it's best to, to be prepared and be well ahead of it. And we're here to help and support that. Excellent. Well, uh, Mohammed, Sija, and Hannah, thank you so much for today. To all the attendees, we had about 150 people connected, plus the people watching on our social media channels. I think this has become quite an important topic nowadays, and, and how do we keep our companies running uh, compliant when it comes to all these new rules and regulations? It, it, it sounds a little bit overwhelming, but uh, looked from the inside and the help that the guys can give uh it's 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 great support i've seen the pricing the pricing is 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 quite uh i wouldn't call it affordable but in the sense it's, it's very well structured uh so i do recommend that people reach out and, and get their house in order when it comes to all this regulation uh we've been seeing questions if we're going to be sharing the full video link we will be sending a follow-up email to everybody registered here today and uh, you can watch the full episode again and we will be sending you also an email with a few documents and links on how and where to register and also with the details of Mohammed Sishan and Hannah for anybody that wants to connect so once again Mohammed Sishan and Hannah thank you so much for your time today and for sharing your knowledge and to all the attendees and creative some clients and non-clients we're here to help with anything that you may need from compliance and tax and accounting and business setup solutions. Thanks again, everybody, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Lorenzo. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.